New at 10, a Fox 5 I team investigation found a huge antique mall. Monroe was allowed to open and operate for years without any written state fire marshals inspections as required by law. Some say preferential treatment for a politically connected owner is the reason a charge the owner denies. Senior Fox 5 I team reporter Dale Russell has this exclusive report. Dale? Lisa, it seems to be a bit of a controversy in Monroe. If you want to shop for antiques, a trip to Monroe is a good idea. Two large antique malls within walking distance of each other. One faced repeated fire safety inspections before it could open. The other opened and operated for some five years without some four years without any written inspections by the state fire marshal. To some, it spells favoritism for a politically connected owner. Walk into the historic Monroe Cotton Mills and you'll find anything and everything an antique hunter would treasure. But it's harder to find an answer to this question. How did this mall open and operate for five years without the required government approval? It is absolutely asinine to think that I would ever want to operate a business, operate a property that is unsafe for the public. That building has never been unsafe for the public to occupy. Attorney Paul Rosenthal bought the building in 2008. His plan, bring in various businesses, including a huge antique mall. Georgia's fire safety law says a business cannot open until a fire inspector determines that it's safe to the public. Then the owner's given a certificate of occupancy. But that didn't happen here. I got a key and I moved in. No problem. Ian Henderson ran the antique mall when it first opened. He said he never even saw a fire inspector. Did you have a certificate of occupancy? I never saw one. Paul assured me that he would handle any issues with the code department. A representative from the state fire marshal's office came out and said, this is fine. But there's nothing in writing that shows that. That may be the case. Mr. Rosenthal admits he had no certificate of occupancy, but insists the state fire inspector gave him a verbal go ahead to let the public in. You're a lawyer. You know there's got to be a record. You know there's got to be a piece of paper that says you have a certificate of occupancy. You can now operate. Well, if you look at all these books in this room, I don't know every single rule or law in this book. Since it opened, Paul Rosenthal says he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to fix up the mill and make it safe, including adding a new sprinkler system. He says around 2012, a new state fire inspector showed up and told him what fire safety issues needed to be fixed. At the end of the day, any time the local code office or the state fire marshal's office has asked us to do something to make sure that the property is as it should be, we've done it. We asked the state fire marshal to see the inspection reports for the antique mall's first four years of operation. And what did we get? Nothing. There weren't any. I don't know why there's not paperwork to back it up. I was not allowed to open in my new location until we did everything to get a full certificate of occupancy. But it was a different story for Ian Henderson. In 2012, he left the cotton mills and opened Ian Henderson's Antique Mall, just a short walk down the street. The state fire inspector rigorously inspected the new property six different times over a three-month period. Inspection reports show the mill owner had to cut two new exit doors, build a ramp for wheelchairs, and add handrails before letting them open to the public. No verbal go-ahead here. And I feel that maybe he's being held to a different standard than the rest of Monroe because of his powerful positions. What's he mean by powerful position? You see, Paul Rosenthal is not only a developer, he's the city attorney for Monroe. So we have never asked for different treatment than anyone else. I don't believe that we've ever received different treatment than anyone else. At the end of the day, is the paperwork as it should be? Obviously it's not. We don't treat anybody differently, to be honest with you. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are. Fire has no uh, discrimination at all. State Fire Marshal Dwayne Garris says his area fire inspector claims he didn't know the Monroe Cotton Mills had an antique mall until 2014 when he stumbled onto it while shopping. Really? That's hard to imagine. That's Ian Henderson's antique mall and that is the Monroe Cotton Mills. 
Five years after this mall opened, the state started finding safety deficiencies, including electrical circuits overloaded, no required fire alarm system, and the inspector ordered the owner to add two new exits and required a fire watch until the fire alarm was installed. I don't believe that some should be held to a higher standard than others. You think that's what happened here? I believe so. Now, Paul Rosenthal's mill finally fixed everything the state fire marshal inspector asked for and got his certificate of occupancy within the last couple of weeks, about some five years after the mall first opened. The assistant state fire marshal told me after hearing about the two different antique malls so close to each other and treated so differently, he's now promising a full investigation internally. And he said he'll get back to us and says, I hope you all follow up. We will. It's so close. How close? It looked like just right across the street. We mapped it, tried to clock it. I think almost two tenths of a mile. Wow. I mean, you know, it's a five, four or five minute walk, mm -hmm. something like that. All right. Dale Russell. Very close. Thanks. Thank you, Dale.